The diffraction grating. Uh, remember when we talked about intensity distribution in Young's double slit experiment, we talked about the case when the number of slits increases from 2 uh, to 3, 4, 5, etc. And as the number of slits increases, if we call the number of slits capital N, the number of secondary maxima we see on the screen were capital N minus 1, and the primary maximum uh, would have uh, basically a much higher amplitude and it would become narrower and sharper as the number of slits increases. So it was basically the ratio of the secondary maximum to primary, primary to secondary maximum was uh, given by capital N square. So it was going as the square of the number of slits. Okay. Now, Imagine that we have uh, an incoming plane uh, wave of light that is incident on this uh, uh, number of slits. So we can form an array of uh, these slits. And uh, from the interference pattern that comes from the uh, slits, so each ray that is uh, coming from the slits will contribute to the interference pattern and we will see once again a zeroth order maximum or cent central maximum m equals zero, first order maximum m equals minus one plus one, etc. Now, <clears throat> if we concentrate on just the two slits, if the slit to slit separation is D, so we have a regular pattern here, uh, you will see that the path difference is once again uh, d sine theta. So it's going to be the same thing that we have seen in the Young double slit experiment. Uh, d sine theta will be the path difference, uh, assuming that we have the parallel ray approximation uh, holds. So uh, because we have a very large number of slits, we will see very sharp maxima, uh, very narrow in width and the secondary maximum uh, will have uh, almost no importance because uh, the ratio of the primary maximum intensity to secondary maximum intensity was given by capital N square. Okay, so the diffraction grating consists of a large number of equally spaced parallel slits. So that's this configuration that we see here. And the path difference delta between two adjacent slits is basically the same analysis we did in Young's double slit experiment. It's d sine theta. So the condition for maximum is when we have a path difference d sine theta or theta bright equals uh, an integer multiple of wavelengths m can be 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 etc. <clears throat> so in the diffraction grating we have uh, the n slit Young's experiment. So Young's interference experiment. So that's what we are doing. Now <clears throat> if the incident radiation contains several wavelengths the nth order maximum for each wavelength occurs at a specific angle. So this makes this a very useful device. So if we have several wavelength components in this uh, incoming plane wave of light, if it is not monochromatic, then we will see a specific angle for each wavelength. So we will see very sharp maxima corresponding to different wavelengths because you can see that the location of these maxima are proportional to uh, the distance uh, to the center is proportional to lambda. So if, if, we, if I have several different wavelengths, I will see different uh, peaks here and therefore I can distinguish the different wavelength components. So this allows me to diagnose the wavelength content of the incoming plane wave of light. Uh, the width of maxima decreases as the number of slits increases. The principal maxima are very sharp and brighter than the two slit inter interference maxima. As we said, the number of um, secondary maxima we see was capital N minus 1, number of slits minus 1, and the ratio was scaling as N square. So that's what we see. Let's take a look at an example. The orders of a gr diffraction grating. Monochromatic light from a helium neon laser, lambda is equal to 632.8 nanometers, is incident normally on a diffraction grating containing 6,000 grooves per centimeter. 
find the angles at which the first and second order maxima are observed. So if I have 6,000 grooves per centimeter, uh, this is uh, 6,000 grooves per centimeter, this is going to give me basically a slit to slit separation D, uh, one centimeter divided by 6,000. So one centimeter divided by 6,000. So this will give me 1.667 times 10 to minus 6 meters. Now the uh, interference condition for constructive interference, I need to have path difference d sine theta 1 equals to m lambda. So it's going to be lambda m equals 1. So that is my path difference. So this gives me for theta 1 sine inverse lambda divided by d. So lambda is 632.8 10 to minus 9 meters divided by slit to slit separation 1.667 10 to minus 6 meters. And this gives me the angle for the first order maximum to be 22.3 degrees or 22.31 degrees. All right, so uh, now I'm going to do the same exercise for the second maximum. So for the second maximum, the path difference d sine theta 2 is equal to, now m equals 2, 2 lambda. So this will give me for the angle theta 2 sine inverse of uh, now I have six, uh, 2 times 632.8 10 to minus 9 meters divided by 1.667 10 to minus 6 meters and this gives me an angle theta 2 49.41 degrees. Okay, so I have located the first order uh, and second order maxima. Now, how about the third order maximum? Uh, for that one, I would do the same thing. Sine theta 3 equals 3 lambda over d now. So this would give me, let's calculate, uh, 3 times... 632.8 10 to minus 9 divided by 1.667 10 to minus 6 1.14 but this we have a problem here sine theta can never be greater than 1 so what does that tell us this tells us that this is not present so we don't have a third order maximum why because sine theta is less or equal to 1. So it's a function that uh, basically varies between plus and minus 1. So we cannot have anything greater than 1. Therefore, that 1 does not exist. Okay, so this diffraction grating, as I said, is quite useful in determining the wavelength component of uh, the uh, incoming light because we have very sharp maxima corresponding to each wavelength component and it has several applications uh, it, it's used in spectrum uh, diffraction grating spectrometer is used in atomic spectroscopy it's used in holography etc now we have an important um, application also in crystals so if you think about the table salt sodium cl uh, chloride structure uh, you can see the crystal structure here we have <clears throat> a distance between two adjacent planes of atoms d and if we have an incident beam uh, that is reflecting from these uh, planes of atoms uh, we will see that the reflected beam and the incident beam uh, coming from the two adjacent planes will have a path difference. So if the pla interplanar separation is D here, and if these rays are coming at an angle theta with respect to the 
plane. So if this is theta, this is 90 minus theta. So this would be theta. So you would have d sine theta multiplied by 2 because this is occurring both on the incident side and on the reflectance side. 2d sine theta equals m lambda would give us the condition for a constructive interference. So m can be 1, 2, 3, etc. m equals uh, 0 would correspond to uh, no path difference. So th therefore m equals 0 does not exist. So this result that 2d sine theta is equal to m lambda gives us the condition for constructive interference from different planes is called Bragg's law. Now the atomic spacing between these planes of atoms is of the order of 0.1 nanometers and therefore uh, we have a regular pattern of uh, atoms basically in this crystal structure. So this is nothing but a, a diffraction grating. A diffraction grating that consists of a, a three-dimensional configuration of atoms. So it's a three-dimensional diffraction grating uh, and in, in this case we use x-rays to probe the uh, separation between atoms because x-rays have the proper wavelength for the uh, for the detection of atomic spacing. Uh, and if we know what wavelength of light we're using in the experiment, and if we uh, look at uh, the constructive interference, we determine the theta, and uh, from this experiment, we can find the interplanar separation. So D can be calculated. So basically, um, three-dimensional diffraction grating uh, in the X-ray diffraction can be used to determine the crystal structure of uh, atoms in a regular pattern like sodium chloride. All right, so uh, we talked about the diffraction grating, which is Young's n slit experiment, if you wish. Um, we have the, if we have two adjacent uh, slits, we have the same condition, uh, d sine theta equals m lambda for constructive interference. And as the number of slits increases, we have sharper and narrower uh, maxima corresponding to each wavelength component in the diffraction grating. That makes it quite useful. And uh, we can determine the wavelength component of the incoming light by looking at the amped order maximum for each wavelength. So we looked at an example. Uh, in a diffraction grating, we can determine the slit to slit separation if we divide the uh, 6,000 grooves per centimeter, basically implies we have one centimeter divided by 6,000 uh, slit to slit separation. So we can divide one centimeter by 6,000. Then we can use since d sine theta equals m lambda to calculate the uh, angles at which we will observe this. Uh, maxima, but then we have to be careful. Some of the maxima may not exist because sine theta has to be uh, less than 1, less or equal to 1. A three-dimensional diffraction grating we talked about is the crystals, as for example, sodium chloride structure. We see that if we look at the path difference for a uh, rays coming from uh, reflected from different planes the path difference is 2d sine theta where d is the interplanar separation this is known as bragg's law and knowing the wavelength and the uh, angle at which we see the uh, constructive interference we can determine the interplanar separation provided that we use the proper uh, wavelength rays so these are x-rays uh, because uh, the atomic spacing is of the order of 0.1 nanometers or angstrom so once again diffraction grating has several important applications in atomic spectroscopy and holography etc